What's up, Buzznet? In reference to the podcast, here again. Back on Freaky Friday. I'm Amanda. I'm Heather. Hit us with that freaky shit, bitch. <laughs> I think your mouth just got as big as my dog when he wants. <laughs> All right, today we're going to learn about Bonnie Springs Ranch. Bonnie Springs Ranch. Bonnie Springs. My sources are Wikipedia, this Travel Channel, and Ghost Adventures. <laughs> Good old GA. Good old Zach. All right. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> uh, the site of the ranch was first established in 1843, basically as a layover. They called it a stopover. <laughs> Which I was like, I'm like, what the fuck is a stopover? And I looked, I'm like, oh, it's like literally like a layover for wagon trains on their way to the way to yeah, to the California on the old Spanish trail. This trail was very dangerous to travel on because Mexico was a threat from the south. The elements could potentially kill you. You always had to be on the look, look out for bandits or you could simply just run out of supplies. <laughs> Hashtag Oregon Trail. <laughs> In 1846, General John C. Fremont stopped at the Springs to prepare for the trip through Death Valley. He was also the first Republican candidate for president in 1856. Is, isn't Death Valley part of a song? Death Valley is the name of a Fall Out Boy song. No. What's the song that I'm thinking of? It's a rap song. It's a rap. Is it LL Cool J? Through the shadows of Calvin. Are you thinking of El, uh, Coolio? Yeah. Gangster Paradise? See? As I whack. As I, as walk I whack. I'm thinking of Amish Paradise from Weird Al Yankovic. No, because he's like, as I walk through the valley where I harvest my grain. <laughs> anyway. Um. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it's my bedtime. The Springs originally only had a ranch house, but in 1860, it had also had a blacksmith shop and a cabin with one room that was built. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bonnie Springs Ranch was named after Bonnie Levinson, the daughter of Western film actor and assistant director Wilbur McGaw. She was a Vegas showgirl in her youth and was also an ice skater. In the 1940s, in Bonnie Vegas? and her... What? She was an ice skater in Vegas? <laughs> I guess it was an indoor skating ring. Must have been. In the 1940s, Bonnie and her mother started a turkey farm in 29 Palms, California. I read that the first time. I was like, I know. I was like, I've heard that somewhere before. And then I realized that was where my cousin was stationed when he was in California. <laughs> Because he always said about 29 palms. I was like, oh, that must be fun. And he's like, no. He's like, it's hot and there's nothing here. Um, in 1952, Bonnie was delivering turkeys to a friend at a diner and ranch in Las Vegas. And when he showed her the ranch, she fell in love with the nearby mountain scenery. A year later, she leased and then purchased the ranch. It was 115 acres and was only 20 miles from Las Vegas. She lived on the ranch from, yeah, from then on. And it included a broken down bar and a three room house. She reopened the bar and ran it without electricity for 12 years <laughs> using kerosene lamps. Bonnie met Al Levinson in 1952 because someone told him to meet, quote, the dizzy blonde running the bar in the desert. <laughs> End quote. They were married in 1954 and were married 40 years until Al's death. In the 1950s, they added horses because of customer interest in horseback riding. By 1962, the ranch included a swimming pool and a stable was added a year later. By 1966, the ranch was popular with Vegas families, but was still unknown to tourists. By June of 1974, a replica of an old of a western town was created named Old Nevada. In the same month, a fire destroyed a barn, a trailer, and a corral. A zoo was added in 1985. We're just going to jump back a couple, like, 100 some years. Uh, zoo was added in 1985. 
A 150-room motel was built in August of 1986, and another 50-room motel was added in 1989. Bonnie's kids, Alan and April, took over the ranch when their father died in December of 94. Plans for a housing development were made in 2005, but never started. As of 2006, the ranch had only had the only restaurant and lodging in the Red Rock Cannon area. Bonnie died in January of 2016 after a brief illness. Her kids continued to run the ranch after her death. In early 2018, the ranch was put up for sale. When the public heard that the ranch was basically to be demolished to put a housing development, they started a petition to declare the ranch a historic landmark. Within days, it received 25,000 signatures and had 51,000 within two weeks. The ranch is scheduled to close in March of 2019, but an appeal against the housing development is scheduled for the end of March. So I was like, oh, I was like, that'd be fun to go to. It's only 20 miles. And I read that and I was like, oh, might not even be open when we go out there. <laughs> I was like, guess not. So there's really like nothing about it that should be paranormal. But there is. But there is. Like, nothing, tra like, nothing really like, severely tragic seemed to have happened. Not that I, not that it was published anywhere yeah. anyway. <laughs> but, you know, they like to not put stuff out. Um, there was a paranormal, down to the spooky shit. <laughs> Hit me with that spooky shit, bitch. Uh, a poor... A paranormal investigator was at the ranch, and a merry-go-round started to spin as though a small child was pushing it. As he approached it, it stopped dead. He also said that you can hear the sound of children in the distance. So I was like, oh, maybe there's, like, houses near there. I looked it up. It's literally just plopped in the middle of the desert by itself, so there's no children. Unless, unless they got lost. Uh, someone was sitting in the schoolhouse and heard a little girl saying that she wanted to go home, which I would be like, <laughs> you can stay here, but I'm gonna go home. <laughs> uh, in the opera house, the keeper, or at the opera house, I put the keeper, I don't know if that's what I meant to write. Was <laughs> Someone who worked there was showing a photographer around and when he went to unlock the padlock on the door, just before he put the key in the lock, the lock dropped down and flipped open into his hand. Like he went to unlock it and it just popped open into his hand. I'd be like, <laughs> well, you can go in there. I'm just gonna stand outside. Uh, there were four people in the opera house and as they were looking around, they noticed that there were five shadows on the wall. You're like, ha <laughs> nope. Uh, there have also been reports of blast, black mists near the stage. The tour guide never tells people that there's activity in the opera house. They tell him. <laughs> they say that they feel an evil presence, but most say that it's an angry feeling that they get. Which I feel like would be the worst. Uh -huh. uh, the Ghost Adventures crew contacted a Paiute Indian spirit leader named Spotted Eagle to perform a ceremony with them to contact the spirit world. And then they decided, oh, hey, there's mountains right there. <laughs> Let's go see if we can find a cave. And before they even got to the mountains to see if they could contact any spirits of Paiute Indians from the Spanish trail days, Aaron ended up getting a cactus stuck in his calf. <laughs> A whole ass walking. cactus? Huh? Like a whole ass cactus? Or? Like, it was a pretty good, like, it was like probably like a, it was like a chunk of a cactus. Because he's like, ow, ow, and then they're like, <laughs> they're like, you got, they're like, you gotta pull it down. And then it was like almost dark and it was like a 45 minute hike from the mountains, like back into like Bonnie Springs Ranch. And I was like, I'm like, you guys are such idiots. I feel like, did Ryan? I have no idea. I feel like BuzzFeed and Unsolved covered this. They I could be happen. wrong. I just, I know I've heard of it before. Um, 
I don't know why, but whenever you said that about Aaron getting this cactus, but then like it like whenever it happened, I'm like, of course it happened to poor Aaron. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, fucking moon moon. <laughs> That is such a great description. Like, that's just what I was thinking. I love him, though, because I feel like I would be him. On Like, if we would ever be like, oh, we're going to go investigate somewhere. Like, I feel like that would be me. Yeah, 100. 100. 100. Because the one, oh, what did they do? There was, like, the one thing, it was, like, this, like in the schoolhouse. And they're like, whoa, we know where we're sending Aaron by himself tonight. <laughs> like why i was like oh poor guy lock him in like a sane asylum by himself lock him in a padded room i feel like i would never be by myself if we started investigating haunted places they call it the buddy system for a reason <laughs> the fact that you were shaking your head no and had a shiver at the same <laughs> it just, time just like made it worse <laughs> your like whole body was like no like, nope <laughs> Um, yeah, no. I wouldn't want to be alone, so I wouldn't send you anywhere alone. Uh, and the last thing that I found was that they have a wax museum. Great. Yeah, one of those old time, like that one we saw at, was that St. Louis? Yes. That creepy ass one that was like falling apart. That was terrifying. And we didn't even go into the scary part. Yeah. Uh, the wax museum is also a location that has a lot of activity. Visitors have said they've seen the figures moving and look as though they are taking deep breaths. Ugh, uh, nope. The management has even said that they've had to nail down some of the displays because they are always out of position. That's some, like, Night at the Museum shit. Also, like, are they crucifying them? What the fuck? <laughs> well, not, like, through their feet and stuff, but, like, well, I guess they would have to. <laughs> Just get some railroad ties and smash them into the floor. Gosh. Yeah, that's the that's the Bonnie Springs ranching. Ranching. I don't know if I put where it's actually at. Somewhere out there. Twenty. Twenty miles outside of Las Vegas. Um, I do not want to go to a wax museum where shit moves. So what do you got next for us on Murder Monday? It's not a Murder Monday. Is that a Monday Monday? It is a Money Monday. And it is... Money the, Madness Monday? Yeah. It is a the it is the 2010 Bellagio robbery. We were there. Not for the robbery, but... No, but we did go to the Bellagio. Um, just the fountain. I don't think... Did we go in the Bellagio? I don't think. We might. I don't know. Mm, I think maybe we did because we wanted to see what it looked like on the inside. Was that the one that we went up and they had like all the shit laying on the floor up on that one hotel on like real high up? There's like empty balls and shit just like laying in the hallway. I don't remember that. I do because I have a picture of you that you have a disgusted look on your face. That's not surprising. Not at all. I don't remember that. I know we went to, like, the top of the Caesar Palace. Maybe that's where it was. Because I, like, we took pictures and my cousin was like, oh my god, is that where you're staying? I was like, girl, I can't afford to stay here. I truly didn't think I would be able to afford to stay on the strip anywhere. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Which is Well, hell, now we found out we could have stayed at Circus Circus for 22 bucks a night. <laughs> In the room that looks like it hasn't been updated since 1960. Uh, there's a clown, there's a man dressed as a clown in the corner, just ignore him. <laughs> the clown statue, uh, urban legend. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> no, thank you. Can I cover up the clown statue in my room? Oh, we don't have clown statues anymore. They creep people out. Uh, can you call the police then? Because there's one in my room. <laughs> Run I would literally grab something and start, like, beating the shit out of it. <laughs> We'll be like, fuck the hotel incidental charge. <laughs> this lamp's from 1907 anyway. This is self-defense. <laughs> My like, it would literally be like a statue, a clown statue, and I would like beat the shit out of it and then have to pay like, for a new statue. <laughs> Circus squared. Change your name. All right. Um, until money... Money, 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 Monday. Money, madness, Monday. Triple M. 
Find us on Instagram at in reference to podcast. Find us on Twitter at in reference to. Shoot us an email in reference pew, pew. to. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> in reference to podcast at gmail.com. We want them spooky stories. Them send us that spooky shit. Bloody. Not bloody. Oh, yeah, we're gonna be bloody. Send us some weird, not like creepy weird. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> On second thought, just don't even send us anything. No. Just send us an email to let you know that let us know that you're listening. Yeah. Or if you have topic suggestions. Or if you just want to say, hey. We need friends. Come join Please. us. <laughs> we have cookies. <laughs> Join us. Heather knows how to make really good cookies. As long as you don't let me touch the oven. <laughs> She's really good at buying Oreos. I'm really good at broiling cookies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can also help support us and Wikipedia on our Patreon at patreon.com backslash in reference to. And I think that'll do it for tonight, today, Freaky Friday. So until next time.